Welcome, Anissa. Hello everyone, thank you for coming. We're very pleased to, to show your movie today. Um, and we'll talk later, so just have a nice projection. <laughs> the first time I saw a girls team play football and I was like, oh. Nadia, for us, is a role model. We really wanted to tell her story because she's a message of hope for so many people and kids. Uh, being like uh, an immigrant from um, uh, Afghanistan, she had to, uh, how do you say, escape Afghanistan after her dad was shot by the Taliban. She was nine years old in 1996. You know, when you kind of feel the moment, the spark, you know, like... She arrived in Denmark and in Denmark she discovered soccer. She became a great soccer player, started to play in the, in the Danish uh, national team and started an incredible career. We had the chance to follow her while she was at the PSG. <laughs> The idea was to take Nadia back to Afghanistan uh, because she never went back there since she had to, uh, to run away from her country. Uh, unfortunately, with the arrival of the Taliban again in power, all our plan changed and the movie became something different but something very interesting because it was really showing uh, what's happening right now in the world and that Afghanistan is back to the war they were in when the Taliban came in power in 1986, again today, and nothing has changed. I lost my dad. He was shot from the back. I want to go kind of to connect with him somehow, you know? For me, it's complicated, It's been a long process from the moment when Edith Chapin was the co-writer of Anissa on this project till the moment it was released uh, in France, it took almost two years. So that was a long process. The situation is really not good. Every day, they kill someone. We have to take all the measures to be very low profile. We had to follow uh, two different things. The first thing was the season in soccer that goes from September till June. And the second thing was, of course, the personal story of Nadia trying to go back to Afghanistan and then having to cope with the idea that she had to get rid of the idea to to give up the idea. So it was something like 30 days of shooting, but from September till June. I'll be a target just because what I stand for. You're telling that it's dangerous. I want to go back. When we do this kind of project, what I do is, is uh, it's important to spend some time with the person I'm telling the story of because like to have this uh, this uh, intimacy creating between each other, this trust, because it's not easy to tell your story and to open your, your door, you know, your home to anyone. So it's uh, it's not only a matter when you do, I think, a documentary talking about somebody and, and you know, um, exploring her life and everything. It's not only a matter of shooting days, but it's also all the work behind and all, you know, the, the, the um, everything that we were doing. I was spending a lot of time with Nadia. Uh, she would come in my family home, like, to spend weekends and stuff. So that that's also very important it's part of the process who makes your heart happy <laughs> you nadia is such a um solar positive human being who completely transcended her life because the beginning of her life is maybe the biggest drama you can imagine of. And she became this incredible soccer player, um, internationally known. She has a record in, uh, in, um, in goal, like uh, making. And she also became a surgeon. While she was doing, like, while she was having her soccer career, she also passed her exam to, became a, to become a surgeon. So it's quite impressive. Nadia should be with us tonight yes. 
and she has surgery tomorrow yeah. because she had an injury at her knee. At her knee yeah. The cross ligaments were broken here in uh, Kentucky, in Louisville, where she plays. So we think about her tonight because mm -hmm. she was supposed to be with us. Yeah. It feels like seven, eight lifetimes already. Is the next 30 years old gonna be that intense also?